I'm going to shift gears because I want to talk about Fitbit because mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic and I'm really curious to know what it was about the wearables market that drew you to it and then I looked at what you were doing with Glowforge and what you see with 3D printing. So I guess it's a twofold question. One is what attracted you to those industries before other people invested in them? And then the selfishly, you know, if people have got money to invest, what do you think's next? <laughs> <laughs> So um, for Fitbit specifically, uh, the word wearables didn't exist when, uh, when we invested in Fitbit. Uh, and I would say we were, uh, we were regularly mocked for investing in a digital pedometer company. Who would ever want one of those? Who would ever use one of those? And what appealed to me about Fitbit is something that appeals to me about many of the companies we invest in, which is that the founders were completely and totally obsessed with the thing that they were working on. And they, J James and Eric, uh, were put on this planet, excuse me, they were put on this planet to build Fitbit. Um, my partners and I have a theme we invest in called human-computer interaction, and we're very intrigued with the idea of the way humans and machines more tightly interact with each other over time. Um, I think that if you look at what Fitbit was in 2010 when we invested in it, uh, is a subset of uh, human-computer interaction that we call hu uh, human instrumentation. Mm. And it's kind of version 0 0.1, right? It's very crude uh, what it does relative to where it can go. But that captured us. And so the sort of the combination of it fitting within one of our themes and then this just complete obsession of the founders around the product was, was key. So what do you think what's next when you talk about human computer interaction? Yeah, so I, I, uh, I get asked this question all the time and my answer generally is I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. And no, no, the reason I, I say it, I, I'd like to believe it's not a cop out. I don't actually really know. And I think that part of what uh, my partners and I try to do is have very open minds about what comes our way. Uh, we guide uh, our interests by these themes that we invest in. Um, but we're not predictors. I think that one of the awesome things that's going on in our society today is that the rate of change uh, of the integration of technology and human beings is happening at a pace that's incomprehensible to us. And so if you, you know, if you were able to time travel 40 years into the future, you would not recognize planet Earth. Mm. And I think we're at a point in time where that's happening. And part of the phenomena that's causing that is the difference in sort of how a line works versus an exponential curve, yeah. right? So I think people, as humans, we're very, very comfortable extrapolating linearly, right? We're here and we're gonna get to here and we're gonna get to here this way. What we're not used to doing is extrapolating geometrically where we go like this. And if your time unit's small enough on a geometric curve, it looks like a line. Mm. So we're always in this mindset of everything's linear. But in fact, much of the innovation curve is geometric, and we're at the, I think we're at the part of the curve, not predicting, um, I guess my, I should say it's my value system, is we're at the part of the curve where there's an incredible amount of upward slope. Thank you You're so welcome. much for your time my this pleasure. morning. I have a gift for you. Awesome. you can't come to Australia without a getting tin cans. Tin cans. And uh, you've had food poisoning. I've so had food poisoning, but I like, run marathons. I like chocolate. So, oh, good. so okay. a Tim Tam is the most irresistible chocolate biscuit, and I will, I will uh, have to test that, but not right this second. <laughs> <laughs> you can take them home with you on the plane. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Great. Uh, My pleasure.